Why do I keep using this? Hey guys, what's up? So, for today's video, going back into the martial arts side of things for this week. Yes, I know I'm late, but I'm still trying to turn stuff out. I at least got some out. But, um, for this video, I thought I would kind of touch on something that tends to still have a big deal of, I guess, confusion and mystery about using, you know, the Chinese straight sword, the Tian, Tian, however you want to pronounce it. And that's this, uh, you know, the use of these fingers here. Now, I'm not going to talk about the overall use of it as to the reasons why it's being used, or like what is it for. I did give my answer before um, in other videos and in the comment section before, and I'll just briefly touch on now that it seems to be a leftover from old shamanic practices. Um, basically, this is kind of like supposed to, like, Dallas used to use it for like rituals and to ward off evil and stuff like that. and it just kind of migrated into Chinese swordsmanship and people these days, they just, they do this out of a sense of tradition. But I'm not focusing on like how it evolved from that and what people are talking about now and why they say like people these days are always used to strike the opponent or it's used to balance energies. I'm not going to touch on that now, later. But what I want to focus specifically on is the whole touching of the wrist thing. Some of you guys who've looked at Chinese martial arts and the straight sword may have noticed that there are times when you're using the sword. Yeah, there are times, I mean, the, the sword is generally used one-handed. There are two-handed versions, of course, but generally when people think of the straight sword, they think of the one-handed, you know, version and the one-handed forms that are done. And many times, of course, you will see it being used one-handed, and this hand will, you know, either be behind you like that, you know, or it will be up here, as if you're warding off a blow, similar to how, you know, some punches are thrown. Sometimes you'll see the hand up here. Um, and this will be in the same position as, you know, you'll move like that. So sometimes you'll see it here, or you'll see it here. Sometimes you may see it here. But you will also at times see the hand go here, on the wrist. And it's usually as you're, like, sometimes you're warding off, or you'll make a cut, and this will be here touching the wrist, or you're thrusting, and the thing will be touching the wrist. That's, that's generally when I see it. And also it's like, you know, sometimes preparing, like if you're blocking whatever, you're pulling the weapon back, it'll be here, see? So it's like either here, or here, you know, cut down, thrusting. It, it tends to be here. And it seems, a, I mean, at first glance, it doesn't seem to be all that weird. But the more you think about it, it's like, okay, why are you putting it on the wrist when you're doing these things? And I know sooner or later that question must come up when people are learning. And the answer that's usually given, at least from my own personal experience, is that it's there to lend strength slash energy slash, you know, support for the attacking hand. It helps you, like, especially, like, for instance, if you're attacking the person, holding the sword, you will, you know, this will give an extra bit of support and push to your thrust. Or if you're warding off a blow, this will give an extra bit of support to help ward off that blow before you then retaliate, right? Sort of makes sense, right? Sort of. I mean, if you're, you know, doing blows, whatever, and an attack is coming in and it's a bit stronger than you expect, having that second hand to, you know, brace would help. This problem, because you're bracing yourself with two fingers, I mean, say what you want about energy and all that and chi and all this other type of stuff that people like focusing on when it comes to Chinese martial arts, even though it's a physical art which depends on physical properties to work. But they're always, you know, it seems a little weird if you're trying to brace for an impact to the strength you're adding to this hand to help brace against it is two fingers. If you're trying, if you're like, imagine a blow is coming in to me like this, boom, and I'm trying to defend against it, oh God, and I do that, which by the way, if a major blow is coming in this way, I wouldn't just straight block it anyway, that's, that's a recipe for getting killed, but let's just say it's coming in and I brace myself, boom, 
and knock it aside and I need that extra strength to kind of push it or nudge it away and then I use two fingers to do it I mean I guess it could be done but wouldn't it make a lot more sense to use the whole hand to push you know now you've got more surface area to, and, and you know now you're not relying on you know the tendons here which could possibly be strained now you got you know now you got all these fingers or better yet you can just use your whole palm now you got nothing bending back it's, you got the, the, the more mass of your forearm is behind it the, you know the, the bones are better aligned to help push against the blow right I mean you can hold this right here excuse me I should have had this out in the begin with I'll just pull this sucker out here so I mean again your tax coming in and I'm and sometimes even when you're standing ready you just stand up. <laughs> Even when you're standing ready, right? And you got the weapon here, and then the guy's coming in, and, and you and you're, you have your ready stance. I'm sure you've seen the ready stance where you're like this, right? And the sword's pointing towards your opponent, and this again is pointing toward on the wrist. I mean, usually say rested on the wrist to help stabilize your stance. And then you're warding off blows, and you know as you're warding off, this is still here to help you have the strength to ward off before you know you would retaliate, right? And do stuff like that. Hey, Keon. Later. Now he wants to talk. <laughs> anyway. The thing is, I think it would make a lot more sense, and you've sometimes even seen this in saber play, where, you know, with doll usage, where if this is resting on here, it's the whole hand, which would make a little bit more sense. And they usually say things like, oh, well, that's because the saber style is based on strength, so now you're using the whole hand here to add more physical strength. Yeah, including when you're going out like that and attacking and the hands out to here, that's supposed to aid to your physical strength instead of using this. Whatever. But even so, you're still just putting it on your wrist. And I mean, this makes a bit more sense. Yeah, now you got more strength if the whole hand is there to push. But then we got another problem, or what I consider to be a much more practical way to do that. Instead of resting your hand here, on the wrist, you know, your fingers, or resting your full hand, wouldn't it make more sense to just do this? I mean, if I'm, you know, defending against someone, make my cut, now I gotta retaliate, instead of doing this, this, doesn't this seem familiar? Japanese swordsman, doesn't this seem familiar? For thrusting? Long sword users, Hema guys, doesn't this make more sense than this? Right? I mean, yeah, you can two hand and then one hand. But I'm still, I mean, I can still go back to this if I want to be fancy, but wouldn't it make more sense? Two hands. Grip with two hands, and then you thrust with two hands, or come down with two hands. We know that there's more stability and strength with two hands, right? This, you know, and you can still keep your weapon aligned. I mean, sure, I could do it with one hand, and I usually do, because it's, you know, a bit more nimble, plus you can use your left hand to ward off the front parry here, cover his arm, and coming like that, but yeah, in case you need that extra strength, instead of just putting it on your wrist, Hold it, grip it, or you know, at least put your hand on here. This hip, by the way, is kind of small, so it's hard for me to grip it completely, but you see what I mean, right? So, what the hell is up with this, touching this? Now, I don't know the full story, but I highly suspect that when you see the forms where they have you putting your hand on your wrist and doing that, it was shorthand for you can either do it one-handed or two-handed. I honestly think that's what it is because there's been several times I've seen applications for certain moves and forms where you practice the form one-handed but then you actually do it two-handed. Like instead of one, two, then it will be one, two. 
two-handed, like the actual application, the guy's holding it in two hands. In fact, there's an entire form I can think of where you do the whole thing. It's, um, it's a Yang Qing form, Yang Qing style sword form, where you practice the whole thing pretty much one-handed, and then application-wise, it's all done two-handed. And like all the times you see the guy putting the hand toward the wrist, you're seeing the guy, boom, right here, gripping it in two hands and going off. I've also seen a version of that with a Bagua sword form, where a lot of the stuff is done one-handed, but every now and then the guy will grip it in two hands. He will not do this. Every time this hand comes back to go here, he will not just go here. He will grip that sword in two hands and continue his motions before going back to one hand. There's some um, praying mantis style sword forms that also do that. In fact, there's a lot of two-handed Praying Mantis seems to have a lot of like two-handed sword forms, where there's a lot of snapping. And instead of it just simply being this on the wrist as he's doing the snap, now they got both hands and it's snapping, which by the way is something I've seen in other sword styles. I've seen, especially that, that one snap, I've seen a lot of Japanese swordsmen do that really quick, boom, like that, just snap that in with their katana. Similar function, and it works pretty damn well. Again, univer there, there's a reason why there's certain techniques that are universal throughout different sword styles, because they work. So, if we got universal motions in swordsmanship that always work, and we've seen throughout different places that if you wanted extra stability, you would use both hands and grip the handle with both hands, preferably with a bit more space than this, because again, this handle's small. I should have picked my other sword. Um, it would make more sense, right? You know, if, if we got all these other things using two hands, there's no reason to think that the Chinese didn't do the same thing. Grip the freaking thing in two hands. And in fact, when you look at the war swords from China, the handles are long enough to grip it in two hands. The Han Jin, that's quite popular, that particular design, it's a two-handed sword. I've seen one-handed versions being sold these days, but it's a two-handed sword. It was meant to be used in two hands. I use it with one hand because of the way I was trained, but it's a two-handed freaking sword. Um, in fact, you constantly keep seeing, up until a certain point, that so many jian being so many jian being produced have long handles to be used in two hands. Can it be used with one hand? Sure, just like a katana can be used with one hand. But you can switch over to two hands. And quite frankly, the war versions, it would make sense if you're in a battlefield, you're fighting. Battles sometimes can take a long time. You don't want to get tired and I can't hold my sword. I'm dead. No, you want to you want to make sure that you know holding in two hands doesn't tire you out as much and gives you more stability, right? So it seems to me because there's a this, this is the thing about Chinese martial arts that I'm finding so much. There's so much shorthand. I mean, that's what my you know the whole why they do that series that I wanted to do and I need to hurry up and get back to doing. That's what it's all about. Trying to expose all the little cultural shorthand things that they put in their forms that may not seem to make much sense until you know the code. And I'm honestly feeling that when you see, and I got you know evidence to kind of support this, when you see this hand here, when you're doing a motion, it's probably telling you you can grip it. I mean, after all, the fingers here, it's not that much of a change to do this, right? It's not that much from going from here to here. Not that much of a change, not that much of a difference. Not that much of a difference from going from here to here. Same thing. Holding the sword like this, waiting for your opponent, instead of like this, like this. Thinking of shorthand that you can go, it's like, you can go either way. <laughs> You can either be here and keep this relaxed, ready to like, if you have to ward off something real quick, of course not, you try not to touch the blade with your bare hand. You know, it's more like, you know, you parry and cover their arm and then attack. But still, it's like either you got that option or you can just keep this here. In case you know you're up against a slightly heavier weapon or you really want to get that extra stability, you're a little bit tired, hold it with two hands. You've got that option. I'm pretty sure that's what it's for. Because let's be brutally honest with ourselves. In the realm of fighting, just putting this like this doesn't make much sense. Oh, this is to push the... This can push too! This can... <laughs>
You don't need this to do this motion. Especially when this helps to facilitate the motion that much better. Especially when, if, you got, if you're using the proper grip, because then you got that leverage to make that snap even better. You know, you got that space between here, you know, you're holding it here, and let's just pretend that I got a longer thing here. You know, boom, boom, instead of boom, boom. See what I mean? It, so I'm pretty sure that's what that is. It's, it's like whenever you happen to see this go here, honest, I'm just going to say that. I know I'm probably going to get comments in the comment section where people are saying you are absolutely wrong. And hey, you know what? I'm not the ultimate master of this weapon. I don't even consider myself an expert of this weapon. I've said this many times before. So I understand. Who knows? You might have um, be able to come up with a better reason as to why this is here. But from my personal experience, from the applications I've seen, from how I was taught, um, from what I've seen of other sword styles, it just seems to me that putting this on the wrist is shorthand for you could grip it with two hands, you know. So then, I, before I end this, because it's now 15 minutes, yeah, <laughs> the obvious question is, well, why don't they just simply grip it in two freaking hands? Cultural reasons. Same reason why you have your fingers like this <laughs> instead of just simply open when you're practicing with it. Sometimes things, they want to keep things beautiful and keep a certain aesthetic to it. Certain things just stay. There are always going to be these little cultural artifacts, things from the past that kind of weave into what we do today. These, I, I guess, vestigial elements in what we do that may not seem to make practical sense now but they're woven in because it's a part of the culture and i'm honestly thinking that this is part of what that is it's not i mean we i'm pretty sure you guys can come up with examples of that in what we do in our western society as well little things that we do or say that may not make much sense when you think about them but we just kind of do it anyway either for aesthetic reasons or traditional reasons or whatever <laughs> Culture, when things evolve, when cultures evolve, it doesn't mean that everything from the past is gone. There's always going to be a few little lingering elements that may not necessarily fit into the new paradigm. So. Anyway, that's it. Hope you guys got something out of that. Catch you guys later.